thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are privileged and honored uh, to host uh, Dr. Antonio Flores uh, at NJCU. Uh, so let's begin with, uh, with gratitude and thanking and, and actually welcome you back home. Uh, Dr. Flores is a 2016 honorary degree recipient of NJCU. So let's give him a round of applause. Uh, NJ uh, Haku uh, and I actually, and this dawned on me actually yesterday um, at uh, Haku on the Road at Hudson Community College. Uh, so first and foremost, let me also acknowledge some of our guests here today. Uh, I know we're gonna have a few more joining us uh, in the coming uh, hour uh, as we engage in a round table discussion about the importance of Hispanic serving institutions, particularly in our today's political climate uh, as we pave our path forward into a better future uh, that our community is indispensable in forging. Um, so I want to acknowledge and thank a indispensable partner and friend, uh, Dr. Chris Reber, president of Hudson Community College. <laughs> this is not hyperbole and it's not lip service. Hudson Community College is the heartbeat of higher education in Hudson County. Um, the American dream finds its first foothold on that campus uh, and hopefully will continue finding its pathway through NJCU's campus uh, and securing a foothold to that middle class of economic mobility, of ushering in unrivaled potential and promise in our community. I also want to thank the Superintendent of Public Schools of Union City, my alma mater, uh, my honorary dia, <laughs> Uh, Sylvia Abado, who's here today. <laughs> Special shout out to our Board of Trustees, uh, Luke Visconti, another honorary degree recipient <laughs> at NJCU, founder and CEO and chairman of Diversity Inc., uh, who personifies the importance of allyship. I can tell you right now, uh, in my short tenure in leadership at NJCU, um, it's easy to feel small in many spaces. Uh, days have been dark, and being able to be surrounded by folks that answer a call willingly to be your padrino, right? That light your way. Uh, I'm going to get choked up uh, saying it. Uh, Luke, you know what you mean to me, uh, what you mean to our students and to this institution. Um, and with profound gratitude, thank you uh, for everything you do, sincerely. Carl's Laniacs, hermano. Uh, it feels like our stories have been interwoven, right? Like I feel like I've been chasing your path that you've been clearing uh, from Brown, right? First generation son, all the way to NJCU, right? And everywhere in between, uh, personifying st servant and leadership. Uh, personifying the importance of mentorship in our community, that if you can touch one life, you change multiple lives. Uh, you walk the walk, man, and, and we're grateful to having you. Uh, fiercely protective of this institution's mission, a staunch advocate for what we want to do and accomplish here, that we're not gonna be distinguished because of our moments of crisis, but the opportunities that we reign uh, out of it. So thank you, Carlos. To Dr. Floyd Jeter, <laughs> uh, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer for the City of Jersey City, a triple NJCU alum who will be receiving his, on, his doctoral degree this May uh, at commencement. So let's give him a shout out. <laughs> Privileged to have you here, brother. Um, my fellow uh, Liderazgo Academy uh, cohort member, Crystal. Lopez from Caldwell College, who if do not walk out of this event today without sharing some time and space with her. She'll remind you, if not that anyone in this gathering needs reminding, but she'll revalidate for you the importance of not just speaking to substance, but acting to, with substance on the importance of being a Hispanic serving institution, 
right? Underscoring service in all we do. Demographics are on our side as a community, right? We're not just an emerging majority, right? We're a force to be reckoned with. The, the economic might of our community would poise us to be the fifth largest economy in the world. Ignoring that power is to the dismay and the peril of our republic. Uh, and it takes its foothold and it's strengthening on, on our campuses. So Crystal echoes that and champions that every single day. Uh, Deborah Cornavaca, honorary Latina. <laughs> <laughs> from the New Jersey Education Association, who's been a champion of NJCU. Uh, from the moment we professed our, our path to a recovery and our revitalization, one anchored around being mission-focused and student-driven, finding allyship there has been critically important. So thank you, Deborah. <laughs> we also have Millie Peralta, uh, Chief of Staff to Senator Cunningham. Uh, our senator here in Jersey City, an NJCU graduate herself. So NJCU graduates, right? You look what you end up, right? <laughs> look what you end up doing. So incredibly important. Uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> they're not all here uh, right now because there's still a university to run, but I want to shout out my colleagues, my teammates, uh, folks who the progress we've made these last three months would be completely uh, un un unattainable. Uh, Dr. Donna Briolt, Dr. Jody Bailey, Ben Durant, uh, Rahel Fester, who I know will watch this later and give me a play-by-play -play of what I could have done a little bit better. <laughs> uh, but folks like that, folks that are moving this institution forward, that are anchored to a mission of service, uh, one that I think will be worthy of emulating uh, because what we're striving to do is emulate the students at this table uh, many of whom personify the very promise of this institution, uh, that, that work and persevere through ins what are seemingly insurmountable odds every single day, weathering the disproportionate and un injustice of a pandemic's tyranny on our community, the, mar the economic marginalization that is generational, right? That you persist and you break through those things for that papelito, right? Uh, that opens doors, right? Uh, because you're not just changing the trajectory of your individual lives, you're shaping community, right? Um, and, you know, I've had privilege in my life. Um, I'm the first generation son of Cuban exiles, literally of a man who pursued freedom on a raft. You know, through an unforgiving sea, with, a, with nothing but the clothes on his back, a deep faith in God, and I talk about God, so no apologies for that, but uh, faith grounds me, right? Uh, but, and that's ultimately the work that we, we do here, what, regardless of how you align it. Uh, it's faith-driven work. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's hope in things not seen, right? Uh, and, and that's the work that we do here, um, you know, but guided by only a compass. Right, to chart a shot at a better life. No one in this room needs a compass to do that. But your college degree charted that for you, right? Um, and that's what we're gonna be fiercely protective of, of, of preserving right here, right now, in this community, for generations to come, right? Um, you know, it, it's, my story isn't unique on this campus. And that's what's so beautiful about this campus. There's often talks about wanting leadership that reflects the community that it serves. I recognize the importance of that, but as someone that can be, check off a lot of boxes, I will tell you that for this leader, uh, for this reluctant leader, uh, there's, it's beautiful when things get really hard, when it's, and there are moments that bring you to your knees to look around this campus and look at our students and see myself reflected back to me. So that's where representation also matters, right? Uh, it's, it's not mutually exclusive. It's mu mutually enhancing. Um, so the chart forward, uh, we will pave together, uh, emboldened, right, by purpose, 
because that's something that I want our students to recognize, regardless of the professions you enter, the careers you lead, purpose crosses disciplines. It does. It's like it will define your life. It will open opportunities that would be otherwise inconceivable when you align yourself to lead a purpose-driven life, to anchor yourself around service. It's easy as a first generation folk, right, uh, to succumb to the soft bigotry of low expectations, right, that, you're, that you don't belong in certain circles and in certain rooms. Well, I tell you, you belong in every room that you walk into. And you will inevitably learn a hard reality and a hard truth that I'm seeing firsthand because imposter syndrome doesn't you know, shed the minute you are seeming, you're so-called so elevated, right? It's only enhanced, right? As you reach new levels and plateaus, you can get lightheaded, right? Because there's no roadmap, right? When you're the first. Uh, but if you anchor yourself with determination that you don't want to be the last, it's like that you're committed to lifting as you climb, incredible things are possible you will reach higher heights as a result. To our community and Latinos in particular, I will say crabs in a barrel <laughs> is a very real thing, right? Uh, celebrate one another's victories, celebrate your colleagues. There's plenty of room at the top. You will travel farther together, right? That's not, it's a proverb for a reason, right? Because it's, test, it's, been, it's tested through time. Um, owned that as a truth, as a, as a self-evident truth, and profess and commit to doing the work that ties you to your community. There's going to be an impulse that success is measured by how much distance you create from where you started. And take it from me, someone a little bit closer in age, right? One of the benefits of this is that uh, a lot's been said about my age and, and what it represents, and the fact that I'm the only Latino to lead a public university, public or private, in the state of New Jersey, the first to do so in over a decade. Uh, you know, and, and that brings a lot of pride and joy, uh, but it's also a recognition that it's, there's also a source of disappointment in that, right? Uh, there should be more of us uh, at the helm. And, but, but I say that because those same rooms that you enter, right, where the imposter syndrome will shake you and test your resolve, promise that you're gonna look around those rooms and very quickly stop questioning how you got into it and start wondering how others even walked in, right? And that should be an affirmation that you belong in the spaces you enter. So walk in proudly because you will never walk into those rooms alone. You will bring your community with you. You're an ambassador for your community. And that's why representation matters so much. Not only, so I'm gonna, tick off a lot of stereotypes. Not only did we start late, but I'm also gonna be long-winded here. Um, I, I, I gotta say, like, it's not lost on me the significance that the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities uh, has had, uh, not just for NJCU, but what it's charted. Founded first in 1986, a good year. I was born that year. Um, uh, and what it's done ever since. I'm the, I am a, in very direct and, and indirect ways, a beneficiary of the work that Dr. Flores and that the association has done, and that all of you will realize in your own lives of the importance of having people with an agenda, driving an agenda in the room where, it's proverb, where things proverbially happen, right? Uh, because if you're not uh, at the table, you're on the menu, right? And, having that fierce advocate, and we don't have a better advocate in Washington and nationally than Dr. Flores. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, we are poised as a community to be elevated because we have true champions that live the mission, right? It's, there are those that talk about it, and then there are those, as we say in Union City, be about it, right? Uh, Haku, is all about it, right? As the singular national voice for Hispanic serving institutions and Hispanic serving school districts across the country, we're an emerging force, right? We're an established force. Uh, we matter. 
We don't always matter enough in certain rooms, uh, but there are folks like Dr. Flores that make sure that we're top of mind when they're in it. Uh, so Dr. Flores, thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, 36 plus years of Haku, right? Nearly a century of NJCU. NJCU, the oldest public university in the state of New Jersey to be a Hispanic serving institution. The hallmark of this recovery and our revitalization will be that we're gonna underscore serving in everything we do. In just the last three months, we're not just tackling structural deficits, right? We're aligning an academic portfolio that produces a return on investment for our students, right? Uh, that, that changes the business model and the paradigm, right? That it's about retention and completion, not just butts and seats, right? That pay uh, tuition dollars. That our goal is to make sure that we're gonna eradicate every single barrier to academic success. Just this week, the University Senate overwhelmingly, by a 95% vote, overhauled our general education curriculum at NJCU, where we're gonna accept every single gen ed credit from any community college, streamlining the path to completion, because the four-year degree need not be earned in four years or five years or six years. If we can do it faster, we will, because we wanna get you in and out as quickly as possible so you can start providing self-sustaining careers and economic security for you and your families and your loved ones and your community. That is a work in real time. NJCU doesn't have a plan. NJCU has a plan in action. <laughs> that work will continue in the coming week when we announce the Hudson Community College NJCU Connect program. Again, streamlining it so that every student that finds that path foothold for the American dream on Hudson County Community College's campus, sees themselves from day one graduating from NJCU with a bachelor's degree. And Dr. Reber, thank you for being an instrumental and indispensable partner of that. Dr. Donna Brialt and Dr. Jody Bailey for bringing a year plus of work with the Aspen Institute to fruition and realization and your team at, at Hudson Community College who's second to none. Thank you, God bless all of you for that work because it's going to change lives. So, Dr. Flores, with that, I have the distinction, and this wasn't planned, uh, it was planned by me, but uh, I, as my team knows, I like to be spontaneous here. Um, and in honor of Cinco de Mayo, in honor of nuestra cultura, de nuestra gente, de nuestra comunidad, uh, and as a proud first generation son of Cuban exiles, right, in presence of the superintendent of my alma mater and, 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 and district, uh, you personify words that have, were basically nursery rhymes to me <laughs> as a young boy, right? That, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Show me who you spend your time with and I'll tell you who you are, right? It's an honor and privilege to even hold time and space with someone like you, to do this mission-driven work alongside you, to have a champion like you, uh, to, from afar, have the privilege to admire and to up close, even, again, share, be able to share time. Um, you know, the words that whispered, right, that swell to a chorus that moves our community forward. Uh, let's not forget that it's whispers of si puede that swell to a chorus of yes we can, right, that change this nation's path to a more perfect union. Um, the, the Cuban father of independence, uh, the, uh, the apostle of the Cuban people, Jose Martí, once recognized that ser bueno es el único modo de ser dichoso. Being good is the only way to be fortunate. Pero ser culto es el único modo de ser libre. Being educated is the only way to be free. We know that in our community. And education, as my parents always told me, ese papelito nadie te lo quita, right? Porque lo que está para ti, nadie te lo quita. What's meant for you, no one takes away from you. What you cultivate in your mind sustains you through life, through every obstacle, through every hardship. That's what we're gonna ingrain and solidify on this campus. And with that, Dr. Flores, I have the distinction uh, and the personal privilege to present you with the New Jersey City University Presidential Medallion. <laughs>